Hi friends, we're so glad you joined us on Take Two with Jerry and Debbie. I'm Debbie Giorgiani along with Jerry Usher and we're just so blessed, so blessed to have uh, you with us today on Take Two because you drive the show. I got to thinking about this topic, Jerry, and I was thinking being a parent is truly a blessing. But you know, Jerry, what I think is even more, I don't know, special, unique, just it's just one of those one of those great titles is being a grandparent because then you can spoil the children rotten you can let them get away with stuff and send them back to their parents isn't that doesn't that sound like fun jerry yeah it's an extra layer of blessings right <laughs> it sure is but today dear listeners we're talking about isn't it great to be a grandparent we want to hear from you about what it means uh, when you were, were were given that news that you were going to be a, a grandmother a grandfather did you did it shock you did you think i'm too young to be a grandparent or did you did you start thinking about what do you, what did you want to be called nana or grandma i know the new thing now is being called glamma because you want to be a glamorous grandma i don't know <laughs> how that, that right? works <laughs> yeah I, I heard that but whatever it is we want to hear from you because it's so special when our families uh, grow and we get to be a part of it and we get to change kind of our our role in the family from being a parent to a grandparent and what does that mean does that does it maybe our the way we spiritually influence our grandkids maybe that's different than the way we influenced our our own children there's so many ways we can weave this into our spiritual life so we want to hear from you on take 2 at 1-800-585-9396 all right come on grandparents this is your program right here and another thought that came to me, Debbie, is we have done, I believe we've done a whole show, I know we've talked about it on the show, about when parents become empty nesters. Mm. And that can create, that can change the entire dynamics for a couple in their home. It's like, okay, well, now what do we do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. And then grandkids come along, and then it, 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 it can bring that, uh, that spark of life sometimes back into a house, into a home. So maybe you're, you're a, a grandfather or a grandmother then when your kids were all out of the house, and then you were, uh, it, ch- it changed the, the environment, the circumstances mm-hmm. where you lived, and then all of a sudden you just had the great joy of having kids back in your home again. This is something that I think would be really neat to hear about from some people. Right. You know why we did this topic, Jerry? You do realize why? it, right? Well, yesterday Why did was... we do this topic, Debbie? <laughs> <laughs> because yesterday was National Grandparents Day. There you go. That's why we did the topic. You see how we stay very involved on current issues? I just love the way we stay up on it on Take Two. But phone lines are filling up. That means you have a lot to say. Now, okay, come on, you guys. This isn't going to be a bragging session on how many gr- grandkids you have versus how many that others have. We want to talk about it really kind of tie it into our faith walk, tie it into our spiritual life so that we can all learn and grow. Now, we all have photo albums g- galore in our homes. We all know that. We all, you know, remember the old uh, wallets, well, Jerry? We used we, to. We used to have photo albums. I was albums. just, you're right. Now remember we have old- hard drives full of pictures. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Do you remember the old wallets, Jerry, where you'd open it up and it would, it would unfold? The pictures right, would unfold. Right, yeah. yeah, that's that's a thing of the past. That's very. I, I just totally dated myself right there. But we all are proud of our grandchildren. We know that. I, I'm not a grandmother yet, but I my sister is, and she's very proud of her grandchild, her grandkids, and that's understandable. And we think that's beautiful. But let's talk about maybe what you're doing to impact your your grandkids' life in a spiritual way. That would be an interesting take on it. One eight hundred. Five eight five nine three nine six. Call in or text us too. You could text us, Jerry. That's right. Yeah, you can text it, uh, text the well the word. It's not really a word. It's a, an acronym. But you can text EWTN to five five zero zero zero, and then you just wait briefly. You'll get a response. Text your first name and your question. It's uh, very possible. Not not in every situation. Uh, on my phone, I have unlimited call and text and data and, and all of that stuff. So, But it's possible that message and data rates may apply, so take that into account. But again, it's texting EWTN to 55000. And yesterday, of course, too, was uh, the anniversary of 9-11, and uh, we don't want to uh, ignore that today. That's However, right. if you were listening Friday, that was the topic of our show on Friday. We did address that on Friday, but still, Debbie, very, very emotional day for a lot of people yesterday, and, and we've certainly got them all in our prayers. We, we certainly do, but there was wonderful tributes all over the uh, TV 
uh, yesterday and I, and Saturday, and I just think that is just beautiful to be able to remember in such a special way. I, um, I absolutely love Jerry when all the names were mentioned one by one of of everybody um, that died that day. I think it's important by name that we pray for people, and it's you know how we feel about that, Jerry. We're always asking for people's names so we can put them in in the book. Uh, dear listeners, this is a family, and we're talking about grandparents today, part of the f- extended family. Wow, family. Think about that for a moment. Grandkids, how cool is that? You can feed them candy and spoil them and then send them home. How awesome is that? Do you see what I'm trying to say here? one 800 trying to get them to avoid eating candy and being spoiled. <laughs> True. True, good point. 1-800-585-9396. Wait another minute. Now is the time to make your plans for the 2016 EWTN Family Celebration. September 17th and 18th are the dates, and Birmingham, Alabama is the place for our celebration of the life and legacy of Mother Angelica. We'll have Holy Mass and Confession, Family Corner, and you can shop for Holy Reminders at EWTN Religious Catalog. And best of all, it's free. For more information, go to EWTN.com slash Family Celebration. No Catholic radio station in your area? Perhaps God is calling you to get involved. Learn more about starting a Catholic radio station where you live. Contact Jack Williams, 205-795-5756 or jwilliams at ewtn.com today. More to Life with Dr. Greg and Lisa Popchak. More to Life is about living the Catholic difference in our marriages, our families, the way we approach life in general. It's about celebrating life and our Catholic faith, and discovering all the ways God wants to bless us and help us be a blessing to others. More to Life with Dr. Greg and Lisa Popchak, weekdays, 10 a.m. Eastern on EWTN Radio. This is Bishop Paul Bradley of the Diocese of Kalamazoo, Michigan. Hi, this is Tim Staples from Catholic Answers Live. This is Father John Ricardo. Thanks for listening to the EWTN Global Catholic Radio Network. Take two with Jerry and Debbie on WTN Radio. We're going to go uh, right to your phone calls here. But first, we have a new affiliate that we want to say hello to. It's uh, one, uh, actually it's 103.9 WLCV, serving Ludington, Michigan. I hope I pronounced that right. Ludington, Michigan. And Debbie and I and our entire listening family congratulate Father Wayne Wheeler at St. Simon Catholic Church, working along with Robert Mulderick at our longtime affiliate, Holy Family Radio. So again, welcome to all of our new listeners hearing us on 103.9 WLCV. That's serving Ludington, Michigan. Debbie, the newest member of the EWTN radio family. Speaking of families, our family grew. (laughs) <laughs> Absolutely. Welcome to the family. That is awesome. Way to go. Okay, Alice, you are first up in New Orleans, Louisiana, listening on the EWTN app. Hi, Alice. Hi, it's me. It's Listen. Alice. It's Alice. Listen. Hi, Alice. I have, hi, Jerry. How you doing? Listen, I have two things to tell you. I had, I have 10 grandchildren, okay? And I don't, <gasps> I don't, the 11th is due next month. But my husband died two days after Katrina, so I'm on my own with, you know, talking to the kid. Well, you know what I mean, you know, being a grandparent. But I tell him when I talk to him, I always call him and give him a blessing saying, God loves you and I, so do I. And they ex- know when Grandma calls, you're going to have, you're going to get a blessing. I call it a blessing. But it helps me to remember that God loves me too. Mm. And, uh, I don't know if I should say this on the air, but one time we were at, I was at Mass with my son and his daughter, and she was maybe three, three or four years old at the time, and I told, God, I told Sarah, I said, see that over there? I said, when she, when, I told her when the, um, when the priest holds up the, the host, that's going to be Jesus. And my son says, Mom, she's, she's only four. And she says, Mom, she's too young to know that. We're not teaching her that yet. Hmm. I said, hmm. I'm thinking, no, the younger you teach them, the better it is. 
Right. They might not understand it, but it'd be better for them to teach them, you know, as soon to me as soon as possible. Well, you know, Alice, what I think, what you were trying to do, even if, even if a, a young child and Debbie, you've been in religious education, you can comment on this better than I can, I'm sure. But I would think that even if a young child, I mean, certainly they're not going to intellectually understand the consecration and transubstantiation, and oh, this, this, uh, the priest says these, oh, they're called the words of consecration, and then, and then the body, you know, the bread becomes the body of Christ. That that thought process may not enter their minds, but it's going to make them curious. It's going to make them say, Grandma, you said that becomes Jesus. How can that how can that little piece of bread be Jesus, Debbie? And then you've got the door is just kicked off its hinges for catechetical instruction for a young little mind. Yeah, Absolutely. I, by uh, by other son, I mean um oh God, I forgot what to tell you. Oh, you asked about where you where the group kids called me, they called me Grand Mayor, G R A N Mayor. I wanted to be called like Mayor, like, but well, we're French. We're from Louisiana, right? And I wanted to be called my Mayor, but my son says no, Mom. That means my, my mother. They don't call you that, so I came up with Grand Mayor. So everybody <laughs> learns Grand Mayor from the time they're born. Oh. They, they I go, Grand Mayor's here. Grand Mayor oh. loves you. And Beautiful. I, you know, it's like, uh huh. But Alice, him. Alice, do you know what I love about what you just said? What what you said earlier? I want I I want to comment on it before I forget because I'm getting older, Alice. I've got to comment right when it comes into my brain. I'm 65, so okay. Okay, so you you can you can relate then, uh, Alice. I love what you said. How you say to the children, "God loves you, and so do I." I think that is so beautiful because they'll oh that uh, even when you said it, Alice, I had this comforting feeling. Just I, I it it was seemed so reassuring, and then to know that their grandmother feels that way about them, and and it's really a beautiful statement. I'm glad you imparted that today to all of us, and maybe that's something that other families can incorporate. And the other thing too, Alice, I was just going to add to what Jerry said. I agree with Jerry complete completely about uh, raising the the uh, excitement and curiosity of children to know the mysteries of um, of God. And you can never start too young. I can tell you stories about when uh, babies, and this is a true statement. In fact, if the uh, the couple, if uh, if Christine and and Randy are listening right now, they'll they'll remember their son Ben uh, when he was a little little boy. Was I was holding him? He was in my arms. He was only like six months old. And when the words of the consecration were being spoken, and the host was being raised, uh, uh, Ben just innately his body turned. And, and faced the altar. It was unbelievable, and everybody noticed it. I mean, he was six months old. I mean, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't know uh, cognitively what was really happening, but he felt it. I mean, so you tell me that it wasn't. It's it, it's hugely powerful, and and so there's stories upon stories of that of, of children reacting or responding with a, with a deep core way. Uh, to the mysteries of God. So, Alice, I think that's awesome. You, you are a great I have a grandmother that brings that bring her baby at at Saint Anne since they were, you know, he was very little. He's about a year and a half or two years now, and she explained to him. And he now, when they start the Our Father, he goes Our Father, mm. and he, you know, he knows that that Jesus on the all, you know, that Jesus when at the consecration, and he'll go, one night he, he said, the priest said something, and he go, he went, amen. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah. Okay, That's beautiful. I'll see you all later. Talk to you next month. Okay. Right, God Bye. bless, Alice. Thanks, love Alice. You. We Thanks love you. Calling. 1-800-585-9396. It's great to be a grandparent. We've got several more calls to get to here. Marianne and Louise, what about grandfathers? Share your experience of loving on those uh, little grands that you have in your life. 1-800-585-9396. I just wanted to make one other quick comment on Alice. She said, she's, when she, she says, God loves you and so do I. I think that can help too because they'll learn that the God they cannot see loves them when someone they can see says, I love you, and then expresses that, and they learn what love is, and then they're hearing, God loves you, and as they grow and they come to realize God is, is not visible, but they'll go, well, God does love me because I saw Grandmare love me. Exactly. You know? so exactly. It right. is. It's so comforting.
All right, Marianne, you're right after Louise. So hang on, Marianne. Louise is in Texas listening to EWTN Radio on Guadalupe Radio. Louise, welcome, uh, and you. how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for taking my call. I just sure. wanted to say several things. I love being a grandmother. I love it, I love it, I love it. And I take full advantage of it by teaching them constantly, teaching her, I just have one, about God. And... and, and and one of the comments is when I used to hold her as a baby because I took care of her as an infant, the parents worked. I could only think of God every time I was holding her, constantly think of God, seeing her little face. And then at one time when she was about three years old, um, we stopped. During the week, we would always stop at the church Yeah, if we were out. We stopped, and it was empty, and we went to the tabernacle and prayed, and then we, I walked around and told her about the Virgin Mary under the, if, un, un, the same windows under the different titles. So we go out of the church, and then for the church, this is a piatto, you know, when uh, Mary, our Virgin Mother, is holding Jesus. So I say, there's the Virgin Mary again. And Jesus, she says, no. And we go back and forth. She says, no. I say, yes, that's the Virgin Mary. She says, no. She says, no, she's the mommy. And here, mm. this is where I say they teach you. She saw, without me saying, there's Mother uh, Mother Mary. She said when she saw it, that was the, the mommy. Wow. So, How old another, is your granddaughter? How old is your granddaughter? She's now 11, but she was three at the time. Okay, three since you... Old. Yeah, since you only have one, we can do this. So what's your granddaughter's name? Uh, Christina. Cri- oh, with she's the, named after Christ. Cri- was, was she? Yeah, Christina. Af- okay, beautiful. How wonderful. And, and her uh, prayer list, because <laughs> I'm okay. always praying for her. And another thing I always do, when I talk to her almost every day, I call her. And we always pray for, uh, for her day and uh, for her Thanksgiving. So I so they get used to, and well, I'm used to praying all the time. So they get used to it, and it, but it comes right. natural to them. So right. and she prays and say, "You start the prayer," and so she usually starts the prayer. And I'll, I'll uh-huh. tell her, "Pray for me, Grandma, because Grandma's going to have to do this or that." And so that's uh, and when I I taught her that our Father, and I, again when she was about three years old, I started to say, "Our Father, let's say it together," and she stopped me. What does our Father mean? And we went through the whole period. She would stop me. And what does that mean? And what does that mean? Wow. So that's just what I said they teach you. So that's a um, few of my comments. Yeah, and, and, and actually, Louise, that gets a little bit back to the point we were making before, is it may not make complete logical sense to a child, but they can slowly, they're going to pick this stuff up, and then they become curious. And your granddaughter asking these questions, what does this mean? What does that mean? Debbie, I can't think of a more rewarding question mm-hmm. that could come from a child or a grandchild than one about the faith. Please explain this element of the faith to me. That's got to be a tremendous, tremendous blessing to Louise and all grandparents. Well, and like Louise was saying, you learn together. She, the children I will teach. The Holy, te- Spirit, it, the Holy Spirit is there, are so alive in them. That's exactly. My Exactly. Oh, we couldn't agree with you more. Louise, thank you so much. And Christina is in our book. So we'll be praying for her as well. Thank you. God bless you and have a beautiful rest of your day in Texas, the great state of Texas. Okay, up next is Marianne. Boy, I just, I love Marianne's because you got both names, the Blessed Mother and her mother. How cool is that in Pennsylvania? Jesus' grandmother. (laughs) I know, Jesus. That's right. Very good. In Pennsylvania on Holy Spirit Radio. Hi, Marianne. Welcome to Take Two. Hello, how are you? Doing Good, well, how, how are, are you? you? I just want to say that the Lord has blessed me more than I could ever ask for. I'm one of ten children, but my children, and I only had three, have already blessed me with 21 living grandchildren oh and five in heaven. Oh, boy. Oh, oh my you. goodness. Do you have to buy Christmas gifts for all 21 <laughs> of them? No, I don't have to, but I do, but I'm not a big spender. <laughs> oh, my. I'm very reasonable with all those kind of things. Otherwise, I'd be broke. <laughs> right, right. But so, no, they wow. think you can, you know, you relive all of the different sacraments all over again through each one of them. Mm-hmm. You know, I have them from newborn up until 19 years old, and it's just awesome. Oh, you my You know, you goodness. get to share in their life, you go through all their tragedies, you go through everything good with them, and... They all help each other out, and the one family um, all home, is all homeschooled. And so, you know, they're home all day, so I work, but I do pop in every now and then on my way home from work and get to see everybody, and it's just really awesome. 
You're blessed. Yeah, you I, are love, blessed. Really blessed. I love the point, Marianne, about uh, going through the sacraments with each one of them. That's something I hadn't really thought about. Uh, we do that ourselves. Of course, we get the sacraments that we receive during our life, and then we have kids. Uh, God willing, we get them baptized and confirmed and First Communion, First Confession, and all that. But then, boy, to have 21, and, and very likely it sounds like perhaps even more, uh, God might bless you with more grandkids from your kids. Um, boy, that, that cycle of receiving the sacraments, Debbie, is just, just, it just seems like there's probably always one happening at, at any given mm-hmm. time of the year. And that mm-hmm. just keeps a family so deeply rooted and connected to the faith. I just really love that aspect of this that Marianne pointed it out. Is. It's, I, I didn't, I, it didn't dawn on me either until you said it, Marianne. I just think it's beautiful. But the, I have to just tell you that the practical side of me is working, as you said, 21. And I'm thinking to myself, how cool would it be if, if all 21 of your grandchildren played an instrument and sang? I mean, you'd have... The, the greatest uh, traveling... You have an orchestra. <laughs> it's orchestra. <laughs> I mean, I'm always thinking, like, do I even play instruments? I'm just curious. Did they ever think of doing anything like that? Some of them have tried the piano, uh-huh. and I think one other instrument, but no. The boys are more into the sports. We have okay. three or four into football right now. We have a couple in volleyball. We, they were all in baseball and soccer. Um, but most of them, I would say, are from 12 on down. Okay, and what do they call you, Marianne? A grandma or nana they or what? They call me nanny. I had nanny. a grandmother who was nanny to me mm-hmm. who lived to be 104. When she turned 100, I asked her, I said, when I have grandchildren, can I take your name? And she said, yes. So. <laughs> oh, bless your heart. Oh, my goodness. You are blessed. Uh, we, uh, oh, Wow, what a great call. I'm so glad you took the time out of your work to call in, and I hope your grandchildren get to listen to this broadcast to know that their grandmother is so proud of all 21 of them. Yes, I am. I love them all. <laughs> awesome, Marianne. I never thought it would happen, but... <laughs> <laughs> boy, boy, did you get uh, many, many blessings. Thanks, Marianne, for your call. We appreciate it. Um, 1-800-585-9396. Yesterday was Grandparents' Day, right? It so was, yes. We're talking today. It's great to be a grandparent. And uh, we had a... What was the show we did recently? Uh, some grandparents actually have actually... Um, Raised other kids. Had the occasion to raise. raise. Mm-hmm. So maybe maybe you're in that situation. Maybe as a grandparent, due to circumstances, you are even uh, perhaps raising your grandkids. Uh, you could share that experience. Or uh, as Debbie said earlier, just the joy of having them kind of be able to come into your home into your life, you you share with them, you hug them, you you love them to death, you pour blessings upon them, and then maybe you get that that benefit of having them then be able to go home with mom and dad because, well, you've already already done that as a parent, Uh, but, uh, you know, maybe they want to, I don't know, sleep over sometimes, Debbie. That's that's something grandkids do, isn't it? Well, I'm chuckling, absolutely, I'm chuckling, Jerry, because you probably don't know this, but when I raised my kids, I was all about the healthy, health conscience, conscience, the, uh, the, organic peanut butter and the no sugar this and all this. And now I can't wait to have grandkids because I'm, I envision myself taking them to a candy store, giving them each bags and saying, go for it, have fun, <laughs> and then go home. You know, I just thought, I don't know, maybe not. Maybe it's probably not a good thing. I probably would go back to the organic peanut butter and they, they probably would think, no, I don't want to go to grandma's house. It's boring. So Yeah, that's what grandma gives yeah. me doesn't taste very good. <laughs> yes, exactly. There's no sugar in it. <laughs> Oh, dear listeners, you are just filling up the phone lines. That is great. You can also text us as well. And uh, we want to hear from you about being a grandparent. That's right. We're going to get to more of your calls here in just a second. want to mention, since we're on the topic of family, that EWTN's family celebration is coming up this weekend, Saturday and Sunday in Birmingham, Alabama. You can get information online at the EWTN.com website. You may look at the calendar and say, oh, uh, Friday, sa- Friday, Saturday's coming up. Sunday, I don't know if I have time. Yes, you do yes, have time absolutely. to make it to the EWTN family celebration. And Debbie, what better year to go than when we honor the life and legacy they of Mother, have Mother Angelica. Mother Angelica, I know, and it's a blast. The family celebrations are phenomenal. If you haven't been to one, please go. Drive in, fly in, do what you have to do, spend the weekend, enjoy it, and you, will, you won't regret it. Uh, dear listeners, you hear that music means we're going to take a break. We're going to hit the pause button, but don't go away. We'll be right back. From EWTN News Nightly in Washington, D.C., I'm Katherine Zeltner with an EWTN News Link. 
Donald Trump says he'll release detailed health information from a new physical exam in the coming days. This after rival Hillary Clinton became ill at a 9-11 anniversary ceremony yesterday. Syrian President Bashar Assad says he's determined to reclaim every area from the terrorists and to rebuild the country. His comments came just hours before the start of a ceasefire brokered by the U.S. and Russia. A house fire in Memphis, Tennessee kills at least nine people today, including three children. Another child is fighting for life in the hospital. It's not yet clear what caused the fire. And Pope Francis says the devil tries to divide the church at the root of unity, which is the Eucharist. During Mass this morning, the Holy Father says division and money are the devil's tools to destroy the church. He encourages us to pray, avoid gossip, and partake in the Eucharist. In honor of our beloved foundress, EWTN has now released a second set of programs commemorating her entrance into eternity. In Memoriam, Mother Mary Angelica, a brand new four-disc treasury that you'll cherish for years to come. Available now from EWTN Religious Catalog. Relive remarkable memories, heartfelt recollections, and laugh-out-loud anecdotes from friends, family, and even Mother herself. I believe the, the network was created by God to teach the person in the living room, the person in the pew, how to live in a nitty-gritty, gutsy world. Memorable moments from an unforgettable life. Make room on your video shelf today for In Memoriam, Mother Mary Angelica. Special live shows and short programs. Available now at EWTNRC.com. This is the show where your takes drive the discussion. Your takes, your comments. Talking about being a grandparent today, we got uh, full phone lines here. So we are going to get to you at 1 800 585 9396. Also, text EWTN to 55000. Wait for a short response. Then just uh, give us your first name and your question. And we've got some text coming in that we will get to here shortly. But up next in line uh, in the calls was Sherry listening to EWTN radio on Redeemer Radio in Bloomington, Indiana. Hi, Sherry. Welcome to Take Two with Jerry and Debbie. Hi, Jerry and Debbie. Um, <laughs> I, a long time ago, when I was young, I'm, I'm going to be 70 pretty soon, um, always thought as a kid I would never have babies and because I love kids so much. I've loved kids since I was old enough to know what a baby was and, and a kid. And um, so when I got married, uh, we tried and tried and tried and no success. Uh, I couldn't get pregnant. And uh, by the grace of, the grace of God, um, my mother and my dad talked to somebody that's daughter was going to have a baby, and they were also Catholic. And so we were able to adopt this little baby from, from this woman's daughter. And the first time that she was put in our arms, it was like, you know, it felt just like I gave birth to her. Mm. Um, she's going to be 40 this year, and wow. I, she is such a blessing. She calls me every single day. My son is 34, and we also adopted him. And um, but the grandkids, um, I prayed and prayed for grandkids, and finally I got the first one. She'll be 12 uh, in November. Is is so sweet, and the youngest one, Gracie, is going to be, uh, or she just turned nine. But um, they pray a lot. They love to go to church. They love to say the rosary. And I have not been able to go. To Florida, they live in Florida. Haven't been able to go to Florida since uh, November because I hurt my knee. And usually, I go every three months. So I surprised them and told them that I was coming. In fact, I'm going to Florida tomorrow. I'm so excited. Aww. And my oldest one, when I told her, she was on the phone. They all, their mom and both the girls were on the phone, and and she started to cry. And I said, "Don't cry, Bella. It's okay. Grandma's coming." And she was sobbing so hard she couldn't talk. And finally, she said, but Grandma, you don't understand. I have been praying every night that your knee would get better so you would come. Oh, and, wow. and, uh, but I feel, as a grandmother, that grandmothers need to talk about God and, and need to tell stories about God and need to tell what life is like when you get older and how you really have to have faith so you don't 
go into things that are bad for you because you've been taught that, you know, to do the right thing. Sure. And I just feel so compelled to do that with every little lesson I give them. And my daughter said the other day, she said, Mom, when you talk to them, she said, I wouldn't talk too long because they, they lose their concentration. <laughs> I said, well, I'm going to talk long anyway, so you might as well forget <laughs> that. So I, I love uh, Padre Pio, St. Padre mm-hmm. Pio. Mm-hmm. So I've got three um, prayer books for each one of the girls and my daughter, um, and I'm taking them down there. And uh, I'm also going to take my rosary tape because it's my favorite one, and, and uh, it, I think they would love it because the singing is so pretty, and it's a beautiful, beautiful rosary said by an Irish priest. Mm-hmm. Um, and anyway, it's great to be a grandma, and my, I know my husband feels the same way, and, and I just feel like God, you know, God knows what our lives are going to be like before we know him, know what it right. is. And we had right. to trust that. And um, short story, when my, my uh, brother and his family were the only ones that lived next door to us um, way back when before we moved, and uh, his wife was sick like six months at a time. She'd be in the hospital about like three or four months. And she was sick like that off and on for 14 years. So they have five kids that I love like my own kids. And I did a lot for them. And I potty trained the last one. And, and I just feel like God knew that was going to be in my life. And when I asked for six kids, he gave me seven. So mm-hmm. he gave me my two and he gave me my brother's five. So wow. um, it's Sherry, been a blessing. Yeah. I've, I've loved each and every minute of it. And I truly Absolutely. feel God's graces. Sherry, a uh, couple things. First of all, you can hear the joy in your heart about yes. your grandkids. Um, um, and I, I think we caught it. It's Bella and Gracie. Is it? Is that? Is that correct? Bella and uh-huh. Gracie. Okay. Uh-huh. So one more thing you got to take to Florida with you. By the way, we're going to be praying that you have a safe travels to Florida. So you got the Take Two family uh, praying for you that you have a wonderful trip. But one more thing, in addition to Padre Pio, which I absolutely love. You know that he's one of my favorite, and the Rosary. You've got to take uh, the. Uh, Take Two website down, TakeTwoShow.com, because Bella and Gracie have to hear the rebroadcast of this episode so that they can uh, hear how their grandmother was so excited and they were (laughs) announced all over global radio that Bella and Gracie have, like, the coolest grandmother, Sherry. So there, you got to add that one to to Florida. Will you take, don't forget to listen to that or have Bella and Gracie listen to it. Could you give me the website one more time? TakeTwoShow.com. Take, take the, two, num- take the num- number two, take two okay. show.com. Dot com. Okay, I really appreciate that. You would love you saw them. <laughs> Absolutely. So, thank oh, God, you so much, and God, God bless, bless you, you for all you do. Thank Thanks, you, Sherry. Sherry. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. Bless your sweetheart. 1-800-585-9396. Emily had a text we'll get to here in a few minutes. Uh, first, though, uh, let's see. Uh, Joe, hang on. You're going to be right after Nikki. Nikki is in St. Louis listening to EWTN Radio on Sirius XM 130. Nikki, you're on Take Two with Jerry and Debbie. How are you? I'm well. Thanks for taking my call and sure. thanks for having this show. Um, we have... Two adult, we have two adult children and four grandchildren. They all live nearby, and they're ages 1 up to 13, and we just have the best time. And both, of the, uh, both moms work out of the, uh, uh, outside the home. So our oldest son, who had the first grandchild, said, would you mind watching him? Cade on on Fridays, and we said, well, absolutely, we'll watch him on Fridays, and then when his brother Nolan came along, that continued, and now the youngest son has two children, Josie and Wyatt, and we have all of the cousins at our home on Fridays, (laughs) Mm. Wow! and it is wonderful, the joy that they give to us, they keep us young. They keep us on our toes because they're busy, busy, but they are just so precious, and we live very close to our parish uh, church and school, so the two oldest attend school there, and they walk over on Fridays, and the two little ones are waiting on Fridays for, you know, Kate and Nolan to come home, to come over here after school, and we just have the best time, and then because we're so close to our parish church, the little ones and I will walk over and we visit the statue of Mary and talk about Mary. And then we have a beautiful statue of, of St. Mother Teresa now. And uh, we uh, visit 
m- that as well. And then as they look at different books and hear different things, they're starting, especially the four-year-old, to put it together. And it is just wonderful. It's amazing to witness their faith starting to take shape and for them to start remembering things and, and, and remembering prayers. They're always cute trying to make the sign of the cross, and they just mm-hmm. have a couple of words that they can remember, um, but, they, they, but they shout them out during the prayer and uh, at mealtime, so that's always, that's always cute. But it just has, we've had so much joy with this that on EWTN we saw an episode for Catholic Grandparents Association, and we started inquiring in our area if there was one, and there wasn't one, so we have just started a chapter at our parish. Oh, great. And, and we are just thrilled because already the ideas and experiences that all the grandparents are sharing with one another about, well, this is how we kind of incorporate our faith. This is, a, this is something we do, and, and this is something else that we do. And, I mean, it's just a treasure trove of ideas and support, and we share the joys, and we share the worries, and we pray for each other, and it is just wonderful. And one of the highlights of that association is the pilgrimage um, every year on the anniversary of St. Joachim and St. Anne for Catholic Grandparents' Day. And wow. so it's a pilgrimage for grandparents and all of their grandchildren. And it can be local. It doesn't Beautiful. have to be far away. So it's just a joy. It's just a joy. Yeah, and Nikki, we can hear the joy and, and for a moment there, the emotion in your voice of, of being able to see these beautiful gifts from God that uh, he has given to your two sons and, and through them to you and your husband, your, your grandkids. And it just makes me realize uh, that obviously uh, with technology and the world has changed so much, it sometimes causes uh, family, you know, kids to have to maybe move away from their parents. Sure. and then they have grandkids, and they're not as close as you enjoy here, Nikki, and I know you realize that, yes. just that, that great gift. There are so many grandparents, Debbie, who whose grandkids may be a couple thousand miles away and don't, don't get to pick them up from school every day and see them you know, on, on every day like Nikki does on a Friday. So that's, that's a, another special blessing, I think, in this whole discussion here is when families are able to stay closer together and, and be able to enjoy one another. It is. It's beautiful. And Nikki, so you are blessed as well. One thing I I just wanted to to share, on radio, you really have to uh, listen very closely to because you don't have a, a, a person right in front of you that you can interact. And so on radio, you're using your your heightened hearing senses and and really kind of picking apart people's words to try and uh, gather emotion behind it. What I think is so adorable, Nikki, is that. It's, it's when you started off uh, your comment, you said, you know, we, we had kids and we have grandkids. It's so funny how you emphasize the grandkids. And it's so typical. I've heard that my sister does the same thing. Same thing. I have a, I have a daughter, but my grandchildren and they all of a sudden get so excited, which I think is, is so beautiful. And the, and here's the thing, too, that I think is amazing. These children are picking up on that. They can feel that unconditional love. They can feel that, that warmth and that acceptance and that just wanting. They, they know they are completely uh, well received by the grandparents. So, Nikki, you're blessed. And I hope you enjoy your Friday with your grandchildren and, um, and just know that we'll be with you in, in spirit. Is there anything else you wanted to share with all of us? You know, hold them close because our 13 year old is off to high school next year. So, wow. The likelihood of him coming over on Fridays. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you they, never know. He might they, come they, over for oh, food. <laughs> right. They, well, they reach. <laughs> they what? reach that point where it's like, um, you know, when when they're six, eight, ten years old, it's great to have mom or dad or grandma pick them up at school, and then thirteen, fourteen, it's like pick me up two blocks away. I'll, I'll meet you. <laughs> I got kicked out of the car for that though. Remember I told you I did. I got kicked out of the did car. Cause I, I did because I asked my mother to drop me off a block before the school and she goes, really? Okay, fine. And she kicked me out of the car. <laughs> Seriously, but that's what happens with teenagers. But you never know. Then you start bringing friends over because then you need a place to hang out. So you never know. Nick, uh, Nikki may have lots of friends of, of, her, grand, of her grandkids. Coming Thanks over. for calling, Nikki. Thanks, and Nikki. Dan, the, the foundation you. you're helping with, you're helping your sons establish is going to be lasting. 
into eternity. Thanks, Nikki. All right, Joe. Joe has been holding patiently, as have others. We'll get to as many of you as we can. Joe is in one of the beautiful cities I love, the Rose City, Portland, Oregon, listening to EWTN Radio on Sirius XM 130. Hi, Joe. Thanks for waiting. Hello, Joe. Oh, come on, Joe. I gave you that beautiful buildup, bragged about Portland. You got to be there. All right, well, actually, we'll check in with Joe, see if he's there. We're going to go to Linda, listening to EWTN Radio on Guadalupe Radio Network in San Antonio, Texas. Hello, Linda. Thanks for calling the show. Yes, hello. Actually, this is Brenda, but that's fine. Oh, Brenda, sorry about that. Yeah, I just wanted to share a sweet story about my grandson. Um, He's six now, and when he was only three, um, uh, we live in different cities, and um, he'd come to stay for a few weeks, and one day he tells me, he says, uh, Nana, you know about the Trinity? I said, yes, what do you know about the Trinity? And he says, well, it's, and he tells me, you know, it's, it's, it's God the Father and, and the, the Son and the Holy Spirit. And I said, yes. He said, but Nana, and he's thinking, he looks really pensive, his little face. And he says, I love but Nana, I think sometimes it should be four. And I said, why? He says, well, because uh, Jesus is in, you know, it's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and he's in French bread, and he's the French bread. And I said, what do you mean, French bread? And um, well, he said, well, he, he's in French bread. And so, and I said, you mean the host? And he said, yes, yes, in, in the host. And so I later told my daughter that he had said that. And, and she laughed and she said, oh, Mom, you know why he said that? Because um, when they were going to church, you know, he's little and he would cross his arms and, and he couldn't receive uh, the host. And he, uh, one day he asked his mom and he was very sad. He looked very sad. And he says, Mom, I wish I wasn't allergic to, 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 um, you know, to, to Jesus and the bread. And, and because my, my grandson is very allergic. I mean, to the point that he's allergic to all, any kind of milk. It's the actual protein in the milk, oh, yeah. eggs, mm-hmm. and he's allergic to nuts. He's allergic to lots of things. They have to carry an EpiPen around all the time and severe. And, um, his mother says, well, honey, I don't think you'll, you'll be allergic to it. It's just you're not old enough yet. You can't, you can't take the host until you've had first communion. And, um, you know, and then, and he, she said he looked so happy. Well, he, he, before they weren't eating any kind of bread. And then of late, when, when he had come over, he had just started to eat French bread where it, because it didn't have, um, the milk or oh, any, gotcha. any, okay. um, right. Uh, right. any eggs or anything in it, you know, so he could actually yep. eat that. And so that's in his mind, he just equated it. Oh. When his mom told him oh, he wasn't precious. allergic to it, he, <laughs> uh, he equated it to French bread. <laughs> Oh my I knew goodness! It was special French bread, but I mean, and it was, but yes, and he, you know, it was so, it was so darling. And I told my daughter, I said, you know, when you guys, when you were three, you and your brother, I don't remember y'all being so, you know, so thoughtful about things and and so mm-hmm. such a deep thinker. <laughs> right, right. But Brenda, you, you, you. Uh, 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 you affirmed what we were saying earlier about how your grandson was drawn into the mystery of the Trinity and then said yes. it should be four people in the Trinity. I mean, how amazing is that at three I years know. old? I mean, at when you think about it, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, know, I, know. I would, I would watch that little boy. I would watch that little boy. We might have a vocation coming out of him to the oh, priesthood. I, I know, I know. And now mm-hmm. it's six. I mean, he's got, oh yeah, he is. And you know, he, she started him at a very early age. He'd always, went to the preschool in, um, at a Catholic preschool. But then she also would drive him all the way to another town where they had uh, the atrium for the Maria Montessori, the Ca- true Maria Catech- Catholic Catech- Montessori Catech- program. Yeah, catechesis yes, of the Good the Shepherd? Catech- of the Good Shepherd. And he started, he would go there also in addition to his preschool, and now he's actually at that school full-time where atrium is, they call it the atrium, but it is, it's part of there, and it goes all the way up to fourth grade, and he's in first now, but it's been wonderful, just, I mean, a wonderful program, and then my daughter and son-in-law are also just wonderful catechists as well to, to their son, so. Well, that, that <laughs> is anyway. wonderful, and I, I can assure you that the catechesis of the Good Shepherd, I'm trained in catechesis of the Good Shepherd, and, and that makes complete sense now, because when the children are setting the altar table, Table, they are they are uh, working through all the elements of mass, and so they do take that time to sit and ponder and pray and to think about different things. And that's what your grandson was definitely uh, showing. And I think that's beautiful. Well, Nana, you are you are blessed as well, Brenda. I, I love the way you, you're called, Nana. I think that is wonderful. That's what I would. I, that's what I think I want to be called, Jerry. I think in Italian, that's for grandmother. Nana? So yeah, Nana, Nana, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, so. you can start calling me. Yeah. Brenda, God bless you for that. Thanks for the call. Oh, thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Bye. Brenda. This is Take Two with Jerry and Debbie. We are talking about it's great to be a grandparent. Yesterday was Grandparents' Day, and so we are getting a lot of great takes here. Uh, in fact, I think we have Joe back in Portland. I sure hope so, listening to EWTN Radio and Sirius XM 130. Joe, do we have you back? Sounds like it. Yes, I'm back. Great. Sorry we, sorry we lost you there for a minute. Uh, no problem. I just wanted to uh, make a comment. Uh, one of your first callers made a comment about... Uh, a grandparent who was trying to introduce their grandchild to Christ in the Eucharist, and the parents told them, no, we don't, haven't done that yet. And I just want to emphasize for all the grandparents that are listening, uh, that are out there, and parents, that uh, please don't underestimate the power or the, of the impact that grandparents have on the life of children. Uh, it's a lifelong memory. It's a lifelong impact. And being exposed to the awe and the wonder of God in the Mass, in the Eucharist, and being uh, exposed to the wonder of God in life is something I think that sometimes as we get older we lose, but our memories of our grandparents help always keep us connected to that. And I think that's so powerful, so important, and I just wanted to say thank you for the grandparents who are, are staying in, active in their child's life and exposing them to everything about God in life and in our Catholic faith. And that's all I wanted to say. So thank you very much for having me on the air. All right. Thanks, Joe. And, and Debbie, what Joe is raising there, I think it's an important, just a very important basic principle. And and we see this sometimes in youth ministry and as kids, as we raise our kids and they get older, even into teens and so forth, sometimes we do underestimate what they're able to absorb. And we see our young people, our, our, ki- our teens, for example, going out and they'll accept challenges to get into gangs and things like this and there are often high prices to pay the gang says you want to belong well then you have to do this first Mm -hmm. and the kids rise to that challenge why don't we do the same thing say if you want to if you want to you know know the faith and live the faith and be a true follower of christ here's what you have to do you have to get on your knees you have to pray you have to feed the poor you have to help your brothers and sisters you have to do something challenging and even at a very very young age like we were saying early in the show, even if they can't logically put the argument together from A to Z, it's still going to plant those seeds in their minds and hearts. They're so I think Joe makes a great point. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Thanks so much, Joe. We're so glad we got you back on. We were we were praying, and, and God answered our prayers. Speaking about answering prayers, if I'm reading this correctly, Matt Gabinski just typed something in. We want to make sure we we uh, praise God, thank God, and then also ask God for one more thing. Janet, one of our Take Two listeners and family, we we were. Praying praying for Janet to get a job and praise God she got the job she got a job but she's taking a test today to see if she can keep the job if I'm reading it correctly so please take two listeners one more time thank God first of all that Janet got the job but please ask God to let her pass this test with flying colors so if God willing uh, that, that that's where God wants her to be that she can keep that job all right, very good. Emily, by the way, uh, did text us, and we'll get to this real quick, and then Kathy will go to you on the phone. Uh, Emily said that <laughs> this is kind of an interesting take, uh, what her grandparents imparted to her. Emily says, my grandparents taught me how to fight well with my spouse. I presume probably means argue well, because those arguments are going to happen within a marriage. But here she says, she says, they taught me to apologize after wrongdoing. So basically, Ooh, when something comes up between me and my spouse, my grandparents taught me how to to resolve that in a very blessed way and then move on from the issue and then she says she's number five of 51 grandchildren so what 51 five of, five of 51 yeah okay that's a big christmas thanks emily <laughs> <laughs> That's huge. I think that's so. That's like the King family. See, I'm dating myself again. You probably don't. You remember the King family, right, Jerry? Remember it was on a TV, the King family? I okay. don't know. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> see, I, I'm, I know I'm not a little older than you, though. But thank you, Emily, for that. But that's good life lessons from grandparents that really can help uh, our marriages. And that's true. We have to remember that because they've walked before us, our grandparents. They know a lot. So it's important for us to listen to them. Kathy, we've only got two minutes, but we wanted to get to you in Fort Worth, Texas, listening on Guadalupe. Lupe Radio Network. Hi, Kathy. Welcome to Take Two. Hi. Hi, Kathy. I'm not sure. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. perfectly. Okay. Okay, great. I have um, a lot of things that this uh, today's show applies for. My parents are visiting me on the way to their 67 and 68 high school reunion, 
and my uh, mother-in-law is 99, and she lives with us. And we are, um, I come from uh, generations of Catholics, but my husband had no Catholics in his family. And for 49 years, I prayed for him to become a Catholic. And this uh, last year, he went through RCIA, and he did. And at the oh, same time, God. at the same time, his mother started 74 years ago to study the Church, and she came into the Church at 99 years old this last Easter. Oh, and so our children... Our, expo- our grandchildren are exposed to a fully Catholic family. Beautiful. And they and so when we pray and we make the sign of the cross and the youngest ones are learning that all of the prayers, um, they they feel so much at, at home because all the, all the generations all together are all praying together, and it's it's great. The the thirteen uh, year old when I took her to mass when she was four. She drew pictures of uh, Jesus and Mary and Joseph, and then she drew a lot of pictures of the angels all around. And mm-hmm. uh, they look like little butterflies. I said, are these butterflies? She said, oh, no, those are the angels. They're here right now. Do you see them? Oh, wow. And oh, I thought, goodness. no, I don't see them, but I know they're here because it was during the Eucharist. Oh, wow. And, and, uh, and then the, the nine-year-old, um, she wants to always sleep in the bed that my that I had that was my father's when he was nine. He carved a crucifix in the headboard, and he got in all kinds of trouble for carving his bed. But I have that bed now, and she sleeps in it, and she draws that picture of that crucifix on paper all the time. Oh my goodness, goodness Kathy! <laughs> Kathy, and, you and are you are blessed. I am, you, and the youngest you one, the five year old little girl. We have a we have a special needs grandson. He's ten. And um, he can't speak, and he can't sit. Um, he has muscular dystrophy. All these little girls take care of him, his cousins and his oh. sister. And, see, uh, and they, do, they do so out of that same kind of love that the church teaches, because the parents right. are all that way. Right. And, and my youngest, the five-year-old, she, they were talking about what they want to be when they grow up. And she said, I want union. Which means she oh, wants communion. Communion. Oh, Kathy. And, well, and, you are blessed. Your family is is uh, being Christ to one another in just a beautiful, multi generational way. It is perfect. It's so so perfect. Thank you, Kathy. Have a beautiful rest of your day in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, Sonia and the others, we're so sorry. We could not get to you. Please go on EWTN Catholic Radio Facebook page, like us on the page, and then leave your comments. We want to keep the conversation going. 3 p.m. Eastern Time, open line. John Martinoni takes your calls on apologetics. Debbie and I would love to come out and meet you in person at an event, a speaking engagement, what have you. Log on to Take2Show.com. Click the yellow J&D logo. All the details are on our website. Have a beautiful and blessed day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.